i-netradio.com i-netradio.com Dobry den, idrabropa jalabat. This is Springtime in Moscow with your host, James Tuthill, and I'm Stephen Simpson. We've got some Russian with a little American, and we're serious with a little humor. So, Jim, what is happening in the world today? Thank you, Steve, for the beautiful introduction. I'm Jim Tuthill. And this is Springtime in Moscow. Today we have our regularly scheduled Tuesday show, The Buddha Beat, exploring the questions that make up our lives, that confront us every day, and the questions that we ponder all the time. I have with me Narisa Waterman, I can't remember the lineup, Anita Munikuntla, and Rosemary J. Ferrer. We're going to do this a little bit differently today because of technical and weather difficulties. Uh, Narisa is going to be on for the first 20 minutes, Anita for the second, and Rosemary will wrap up the show. I want to remind everybody that we're here on i-netradio.com, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, broadcasting from the Gold Coast of Florida. And we have a brand new daily show at 1, 4, 7, and 10 p.m. Eastern Standard and New York Time. We also have the Classical Music Hour every weekday at 12 noon and 8 p.m. How are you, Narisa? I am fine, James. I'm happy to be here with you. Yes, I'm happy that we're broadcasting. (laughs) Uh, We're going to talk about love for your fellow man. I think it's a hard thing to do. I think it's an easy thing to say. Somebody wrote, this is true regarding love for your fellow man. This is a rabbi, by the way. We're going to start the show off a little differently today uh, with a rabbi, and uh, which is always good. And the rabbi said, uh, if you say to your child, I love you and I am compassionate, but you don't listen to what the child has to say or you don't go out of your way to help the child or you pay no attention to the child's desires and wishes, you are not really showing love. You may feel the feeling of love, very true, but somehow it doesn't translate. It's when love translates into behavior that it becomes love fulfilled or love in any real sense. I've been doing this show, The Buddha Beat, for 14 months. So many times we have talked about putting these ideas, these thoughts, these principles into action. Action is the key. We talk about that all the time. Mr. Ikeda, one of his big, big, big themes is action. What difference does it make if you say it, I mean, if you're thinking about it or writing about it or idealizing about it, but you're not doing it? It really doesn't do a heck of a lot. So, Narisa, how do we put into, let's say that it's a good thing to love our fellow man, and we're going to go into that in a second, but how do we put this love into action? What do we do? Do we go out and start a soup kitchen? Do we take over an orphanage? Do we uh, give groceries to a family that uh, needs food? Or... Do we just simply express our love by how we behave? Uh, You know, I don't know. I guess being polite, being mannerly, maybe even saying to your neighbor, I love you. Well, boy, I don't know. You say that to your neighbor, they're going to get a very funny feeling if you say I love you, I think. People don't say that in the United States of America too much, especially nowadays with all this business between heterosexuals and homosexuals and everybody else, love has become kind of complicated. But how would you, Narisa, go about loving your fellow man and putting it into action? Well, why can't we do everything? Why can't we open the soup kitchen and the orphanage and give groceries to those who are in need and tell our neighbors that we love them? Love is about compassion showing compassion for your fellow neighbor, for the mailman, for for everyone around you. You know, to make another person happy, 
should be self-satisfaction for yourself. That should make you happy. If another person is suffering, then, you know, I suffer as well. So in order to show love, I have to show love in a way that shows that I really, really care. I have to put my actions behind my words. I have to show it so you can feel it and you can understand that I love you and I care about you. Now, number two. What And I'm going to give you a good example of this. What if the person or people that you're expressing this love to through your action, they reject it, they don't like it, and they don't particularly want to be loved by you? I'm going to give you an example. Okay. Downstairs in my condominium is a cafe and a convenience store. Okay. Two years ago, I met the woman who runs it during the day, and I'm telling you now, the mm -hmm. first two minutes, I knew she didn't like me. She just didn't like me. I'm not her kind of person. She, for some reason, I'm not for her. And I understand that. I'm not for everybody, okay? And everybody's not for me. And there are certain people, even if I stand on my head, they're not particularly going to like me. So what I did was I bent over backwards to try to convey at least liking, but sort of a love for my fellow man. And every time I walked in, good morning, how are you? It's a beautiful day. She mm -hmm. would sometimes make me an egg sandwich, which really was fabulous. And I would say, this is so good, and this is terrific, and I love this. Number three, I would always go out of my way to say goodbye and wish her a good day. And most importantly, number four, when you talk about action, I would always leave her a nice tip, okay? You can forget about the first three. Who cares about that? But I'd always leave her a nice tip, all right? Okay. This woman never accepted my liking or my loving. Never. And, the, and it came to a head a few, about two months ago, uh -huh. and I became unhappy. And she, be, she just she started yelling at me one day down there, and I wasn't too happy. I didn't yell back, but I wasn't too happy. What do you do when somebody just doesn't want your love? Maybe they don't like you. Maybe they don't want to hear what you have to say. What do you do then? Well, you're not going to be everyone's cup of tea. So in that situation, you don't let her negative energy affect you. You're going to continue to do the things that you've been doing up until this point. Maybe eventually she will come around and maybe she won't. But the point is, as long as you're happy doing the things that you're doing, you know, giving her the compliments and giving her the tip or whatever, it doesn't really matter in the end. What matters is that you're happy and you're, you're showing her love and you're showing her kindness, regardless if she's returning that same love back to you. You're not doing it for a reward from her. You're doing it for self-satisfaction for yourself. As long as you walk out of that cafe and you feel good and you feel happy, you've accomplished something for that. Okay. Number three, let's get back to what this rabbi has to say. You go out just like me. Just uh -huh. like me, I, I didn't say I love you, but just like me, I said something nice, and I love you, and I, if somebody says to another person, I love you, and I am compassionate. Well, those are hollow words unless you put them into action. Now, the rabbi says, number one, that you have to listen to what the other person has to say. Are you willing to make that effort? Yes, I'll listen to what you have to say. I may not like it, but I will listen. I'll give you my undivided attention. Yeah, and it's not that hard. Most people aren't thinking angry or nasty or horrible thoughts. Uh, most people, what they have to say is is, re is real. You know, yeah. it's it's not it's not that bad. <laughs> so, I mean, I realize 3% of the population is going to say something terrible, but 97% are going to be okay. Exactly. Then he says, number two, forget about just saying I love you, which can be shallow. He says you have to help the other person. You agree with that? 
I have to help the other person. Yep, you got to do something. In other words, I hate to get you, I hate to be trite, but action, mm -hmm. action, action. I guess I will have to agree with him. I guess I will have to show that my words are just not words. I have to, you know, prove to some level that what I'm saying is sincere. And the only way I can do that is with action. Yes. And then lastly, he said, you know, boy, this is a tough one. You have to pay attention to the oh. other person's desires and wishes. Uh, you know, Narisa, how many times, at least with me, you know, I have a lot on my mind, not just with the radio. I, you know, I have three children, even though they're 30 and over, I still have some sort of moral. I mean, it's not a, an obligation. It's just what I want to do. I try to look out for them and see what they're doing. And, you know, I have a lot on my mind. And sometimes I just don't pay the attention that I should. And a lot of times what people say goes in one ear and out the other. It's not so easy to pay attention to another person's desire and wishes. That is absolutely true. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you know? I agree with you entirely. So many times I have. I don't know. I've just had a bad communication breakdown with somebody, and it's been my fault. And I say to them, okay. I get a little testy. I get impatient, which I shouldn't do. I say, I am going to give you my undivided attention. I'm going to listen to every single word that you have to say, and I'm going to shut out everything else. Even though that's a little harsh, even though mm -hmm. it's a little impatient, it's not that bad an idea when you think about it, okay? And when I say that, I do it, okay? I sit there and I listen to every word they have to say, and I understand it, and I hear it. And okay. I do it. But sometimes I have to talk myself into it. <laughs> I do. <laughs> but uh, but uh, when I realize that, I, you know, they're losing me, I shut <laughs> everything else out. And I do listen to every word that they have to say. I may not agree with what they have to say. I may not like what they have to say. And I may not even understand what they have to say. But I give it my all. I give it my all. I really do try. So I agree with this rabbi. We don't know his name. We never know anybody's name on springtime in Moscow. Everybody's anonymous. But anyway, uh, I think that those are good ideas. Now... Now, this is the big part. Every right. philosopher, every leading philosopher in the world, every real philosopher, every intellectual philosopher, including Nietzsche and Plato, Aristotle, I mean, I could go right down the list. Mm -hmm. uh, they all teach that life is interconnected, okay? Yeah. And, you know, it's true. When somebody you know that you have dealt with, that you have interacted with. You may not even like them, but mm -hmm. people that you have interacted with during your life, uh, when they die, uh, you don't, I feel it. Even if I didn't like the person, I do feel it. And I do feel, honest to goodness, that a little bit of me has been lost, okay? Because even though the guy was an axe murderer, he was my axe murderer, if you know if you know what I mean. I understand, yeah. Yeah, and Buddhism, I would probably imagine, I know Buddhism says it in black and white and neon lights. I would imagine that most religions teach that all life is interconnected then we all are connected to one another. There's no doubt about that. Exactly, yes. Uh, is it important to you as a human being, first, and secondly, as a Nietzschean Buddhist, that you love your fellow man? Is that important to you? Yes, it is. It's very important to me. The way I treat an individual is how I expect to be treated in return um, with the utmost respect love and dignity. I mean, what else is there? We have to treat a person how you want to be treated at the end of the day. What if you just 
can't st- <laughs> just can't stand to, to listen to the person, not because of what they have to say or not because of who they are. <laughs> you just can't stand the tone of their voice and the way <laughs> and the way they say it. They seem to be nagging. I don't well, life is not perfect. So, you know, that's just something that, you know, you have to work on. Yes. You got to work on it. You got to give this some effort. It's the other person's fault that you can't stand their voice or you think yeah. they're nagging. That's something that you have to work on personally to overcome that yes. obstacle. <laughs> yes. But it happens. Now, Where they you- also say... You know, I take this from other people. I don't even, I, I don't try to make it up as I go. I take this from pretty significant writings. That Buddhism stresses the value of good friends who help us advance in life. So I say to you, if you had not made the effort and taken the action to, you know, I don't know if you have to love the other guy, but at least like the other guy and care about the other person. Okay, And, you know, in the old days, we used to say love of fellow man. Well, now, obviously, it means love of fellow man and fellow woman. All right. Do you feel that the at least the liking and the caring? I'm not saying that you fell in love with everybody you met, but the liking and the caring of uh, good friends. Do you think that those people helped? you advance in life maybe just by the mere fact that they were your friends absolutely your friends are your cheerleaders they motivate you they pick you up when you're down they help you if they really truly care about you they bring out the best in you and even when they see the worst in you they still stick by your side and still try to bring out the best in you so yeah i think friends and yeah, it helps. So in other me. words, when you love your fellow man or woman, it's not a one-way street. You get something out of it too. Yes. Yeah. It's not a one-way street. Yeah. yeah, you get a little bit something back. Yeah, I benefit. Sure. From every, whether it's advice, a hug, whatever it is, I benefit. Too, yeah, so. I agree. So I think that we can say to everybody, don't think that, you know, you're making the effort and getting nothing in return. That's not really true. When you make the effort, you are getting something in return. Sure, maybe the other person's getting more than you're getting, but you're getting something. You're getting something. Exactly. Yeah, so don't don't say, oh, boy, if I just waste my time doing that, you know, what what what's in it for me? Have you ever, you know, what? I'm sure we all think that. What's in it for me? Well, if that's your attitude, and I can understand that attitude, well, there is something in it for you. There is. And uh, you, I think people would be surprised how uh, that it will make them happy yeah, if they uh, love, and care, or love, like, or care for somebody else. I don't want to get too caught up in that word love because that's huge and I think liking and caring are enough, okay? But if you want to love everybody, be my guest. Uh, I think that's. I think it's pretty hard to go all the way, but I like liking and caring. So uh, that's kind of where we are, you know? And I think that this philosophy of loving your fellow man has been around, obviously, for a long time. Uh But as exhibited during the 20th century with uh, what happened in Cambodia, what happened with the Tutus in uh, Africa, 600,000 people killed, Uh, the Turks killed a million Armenians in 1910, we lost 40 million Russians from 1945 to 1952. And I could go on and on, believe me. Uh, and the Holocaust, the Holocaust, 6 million Jewish people. I could go on forever. Uh, I think, though, I really do. I'm starting to get a sense that people are becoming a little more loving. We've had less wars 
than we did before 1950. And uh, I, I, I think there is hope that people a little bit are starting to care about their fellow man. Do you, do you sense that, Marisa? I think so. I think there's more compassion in the yeah. world. Yeah. Even think- though here politically in the U.S. they don't want to spend a dime to feed somebody or shelter them or whatever. In, in spite of that, uh, I think it is the, most of the people are getting better and better and better. So exactly. I have hope. All right, Narisa, that's your 20 minutes of fame. I thank you for being on, and we're going to bring on uh, Rosemary Ferrer. Okay? Remember, I love you. (laughs) I love you too. And Uh, I want everybody to remember that you are the host of the Cooking Hour on i-net radio every Friday and every Saturday. And I love you for that too. Thank you. Thank you, Narisa. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. And now I have with me in the i-Net Radio studio, Anita Mooney Kuntla. Anita, how are you today? Very pretty good. Anita, we're doing this in a little unusual manner today. We're doing this in 20-minute segments. And during the first 20 minutes, I talked to Narisa about taking action, taking actual action to love, like, or care for the other person. And we talked uh, how that works and whether the other person sometimes isn't crazy about your love or your liking them. They're really not too interested, and we talked about that. But what I want to explore with you is, in one of these articles, It says that human relationships are at once the greatest treasure and the greatest challenges. No doubt uh, about it, that we can experience in life. And uh, Narisa and I went through the fact that Buddhism teaches that all life is interconnected. And they also say that our relationships mirror the state of our own life and what we perceive to be the fault of another person actually highlights something we need to address in our own lives. Right. What do you think? Now, it's hard to, I imagine, to love, maybe even to like, or maybe even to care for somebody who you perceive to have character flaws or deep character flaws. But this article says that what you perceive to be the fault fault of another person actually highlights something we need to address in our own lives. What do you think about that? I don't know. What do, what do you make of that? Uh, I can think the ideal, ideal is to respect and highest potential within our lives and the lives of others. When we bow to the image in a mirror, the image in the mirror likewise bows to us. Yeah, now you think that's true? Uh, yes, because by chanting, anything can, can transform. That's why they are stressing like everything, what you see, what you do, it get back to you. Okay. So it's a, Gohanzan is a mirror. Gohanzan is like our mirror. So when you see the image, it comes back. You see your own image there. So uh, ultimately, opening our hearts and developing our own compassion through Buddhist practice will enable us to value our human relationships and appreciate the extent to which our lives are supported in many ways by the efforts to others. I think what you're saying is, is that you sort of, in order to love and like and care for other people, you sort of have to realize that you ain't so perfect either. You ain't so wonderful yourself, and yep. uh, and maybe you ought to realize, well, that other thing about that other person, I may be the same, doing the same thing. Yeah. And, and you need to sort of accept that and love them in spite of that, okay? Yeah. Is it really lo- having a good friend, liking somebody in spite of the fact that you don't like everything about them? 
Uh, it depends, really. It happens because, you know, you, know, you encounter all kinds of people. But yeah. that's what we learn in Nichiren Buddhist as a Buddhist. Patience is very important. Not yes. every person is the same. So you have to go, right? You have yeah. to go according to the person. Yes. Well, when you become a teacher in Miami-Dade County, and I'm sure of it, they, yeah. they, that this is one of the principles that they tell you in every school district, probably in the whole world. Number one, you have to look out for the safety of the child. You definitely want to make sure that the child lives through these six hours and gets returned home, okay? That's yeah. important to make sure that little Johnny's alive at the end of the day. Yeah. But number two, they want us to bring out the highest potential in each student. And that's not so easy, okay? Now, if you have a student that's not too bright, you still got to bring out the child's highest potential, all right? Now, yeah. you mentioned the ideal is to respect the highest potential in the lives of others. Yeah. I think you have to sort of accept the fact that the other person, they may have a lower potential than other people, but you still have to bring out their highest potential potential that's love isn't it yes because yeah because you're helping a student to come up because you know that's his life he has to come up he has to look into the life not yes. only the teachers the parents is also responsible you know like a parent should support the child and as well as in school teachers are it's not to totally depend on only in the teachers though it depend on the child also they should give a try and well, why should you spend your time on somebody who was born lazy, born not that smart, and born not that interested? <laughs> They're not, they don't really care. Why yeah, should you spend not... your time loving and caring and liking that person? Why, why, why? Because we want all, the, because the youth, it's their generation. We want them to have a good life. So if someone is lazy or anything, but they can come up, right? If you help a person who is in need, that's what we are, that's the ideal love. You show him the compassion, you show him the, you know, love, definitely they'll work on it. If you explain it, if he, it may not be, he may not be as smart as the other person, but he can definitely, you know, he can definitely try. You can try his the highest potential for his life condition. You and it's not just the, kids. The person could be 60, 70, or 80, right? Yeah. Sure. Uh, yes. Any person, we are talking in general about the humanity. So it depends from the child to the older person. So we can chant for their happiness. You know, before we do, we can chant and we can try to make them understand what is the life and how can he, you know, he can come up. Yeah. Or with, same with the student. And uh, there is nothing wrong in trying. You know, I don't like, think it's ever too late. No, no matter not. how old the person is, you can still no. work on developing their highest potential potential of life condition and they are willing because the persons who are willing to put their time and make them understand it definitely work out mm. and you talked about opening your our hearts and being compassionate mm -hmm. and valuing our human relationships i learned i don't know 10 15 maybe 20 years ago probably not but I learned that you do have to value your human relationships. You do have to value your friends. I make it a point, I fail more than I succeed, but I make it a point to try to stay in contact with all the people that I became close friends with, you know, not just acquaintances. And it's hard because I moved from West Palm Beach after 35 years to Miami. And it's hard for me to physically see these people. But I did try to, I think it's hard, I think it's easy to make enemies and hard to make friends. And I think that when you do make a friend, you better value the relationship and you better do everything you can to keep that friendship alive. That, that's me. I mean, how important to you is it to value our relationships and our friendships? It's very important. The you know, valuing the humanity, any person doesn't matter. It's your family, it's your husband, your son, your friend, colleague. 
you give respect you get the respect so it's very important to keep the relationship we are not here to break the relationships yeah so it's very tough uh, you know keeping a relationship as said it's easier but when you work on a relationship on friendships or any kind of it's really tough going so that's why you know we learn patience with patience everything can get in. that's why we chant for our inner self to be that higher potential life so that we can help the other person we can have that kind of patience that uh, we can you know we can keep the relationships yes we, we have to help ourselves first before you help the other person yeah i agree yeah and you got to i guess make yourself happy before somebody else can make you happy yeah because yeah. if you're not happy with you, it doesn't matter how how hard you try but that you know that depression will show on your face yes you know that, that shouldn't be happen because you are open to the you know as a, as our mentor if you're following our mentors they went through lot of challenges compared to them we are like nowhere we can't stand in nowhere with their challenges they went to the our president three presidents the former presidents they went to the jail somebody you know like one of the president died yeah right in the jail mhm baka guchi Mm-hmm. so you know, if you take their for if you we we go on their following we are like you know we are trying to keep up but still challenges are challenges as long as you live you live with the challenges and you got to see you got to see for the solutions and that's why gohanson is there as our supporter just on a one to one basis not what? just trying to connect with large groups of people or connect with the world make the world happy just one on one it you know you, it is challenging to love your fellow individual woman or man it's not so easy not everybody's so receptive to it not everybody some people you know some people think they're not worthy of being loved you ever you ever realize that yeah but see what other person thinking they may not be but the thing is it's important what you're thinking you have that confidence and courage to take a step forward yes. to help the other person we are not talking about one person we are talking about group of people in sgi when you go to the meetings and when you give your experience you see hundreds of people you're not giving only front of one or two people you should be confident you should be courage enough that you can take the step and you can make the humanity you are you're doing a human revolution there taking care of you know yourself and helping other people so you know ultimately i think when you have a you are very you know like confident you can take care of the other people yes you know if not today or tomorrow they'll try to understand it take little time but it it will work out and i think that we what you said before we have to appreciate the extent yes to which our lives are supported by the efforts of others we don't seem to get that in the united states we have this thing that we these business guys that they made it on their own they didn't get any help from anybody you ever heard that term self-made man I, it yeah. doesn't exist uh a need and there's no such thing as a self-made man well first of all i think his parents had to take a roll in the hay one night before he even became a person right Yes. Uh but take it to much more sophisticated levels. I mean, nobody and, and and when they say successful, they mean financially successful. Nobody became financially successful by themselves. They had to have the efforts of other people. And a person who doesn't understand that or appreciate that, ah, oh, man. uh they're making a big mistake and i don't think that they're capable really of loving caring or liking for other people you have to realize how far you've come in life and not just financially in whatever you wanted to do just there are people that do things they don't make a lot of money doing it but it makes them happy uh how far you have advanced by the efforts of others Yes. Don't you agree? I mean, isn't that the height of arrogance to think that you did everything 100% by yourself? Nobody can do everything by yourself. No. You need other people's efforts and yes. definitely it counts because it doesn't matter you become the president also you you should never forget the people who helped you who are behind you. 
Yes. You know, behind the scenes helping. You so, know, there's an old saying, you better be nice to the people while you're going up because yeah. you're going to meet them while you're going down. But, uh, yeah, down, yeah. <laughs> I, that is true. Yes. I, no, you can be that uh, arrogant, though. I don't think, you know, if not today, tomorrow you will realize, you know, like, so now you're in the position, maybe you forget. But I think as a humanity, you should never forget those kind of people because no. those are the people who will dare in your bad and good times. And Nietzsche had a quote, which we've all read before, but when a tree has been transplanted, though fierce winds may blow, it will not topple if it has a firm stake to hold it up. But even a tree that has grown up in place may fall over if its roots are weak. Even a feeble person will not stumble if those supporting him are strong. But a person of considerable strength when alone may yes, fall okay. down on an uneven path. You yes. know, it's tough to go it alone, Anita. Very, yeah. you know, it, it's just tough. It's tough to do that. No, you can't. Yep, you and, and you are going to have, no matter how high up you get, you are going to encounter problems. I think it's impossible to avoid problems just because you've made it to where you want to be. All right? I think, I think we all have problems every single day, so... Uh, I think we need people. Everybody does. Even yeah. I, I agree with you. Yeah. You, you can't do anything. You by need your... people, and we need to do good things. We need to treat other people the way we would like them to treat us. Okay. If the foundation is strong, if yeah. the people are support us are strong, you can win the world. Yes. A ab absolutely. And. Uh, uh, you know, it, it, this is all interesting. I just don't think that people think enough about this. But I think, I, as I discussed with uh, uh, Narisa, I do believe, I, this is hard, it is hard to believe, I think that there are some people in the world who are thinking about these things and taking to heart that you have to, and as I said to her, I'm not sure you have to l love somebody. But you at least have to like them, and you at least have to care for them. If you love them so much, the better. That's good. That's good. So that sort of takes us, if we only have a couple of minutes left on this segment. You mm -hmm. know, Anita, it's not always easy to love your fellow family members, you know? <laughs> they can be the hardest ones to love sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, it, you know, it's there. It's a daily life, you know, not yeah. everyone in the same, you know, the two kids, you have boy and girl, they're not same, you know, they have their own personalities, yes. but we are, as a parent, we are there to guide them yeah. and we, we are chanting for their happiness to come up. So it happens, you know, like, but they understand if not. Yeah, but, you're, but spouses and children can make it difficult for, yeah, for you to get through to them and love them. Now, they can. They can be very challenging, and they yes. can put up a defense and an exterior, okay? They don't Isn't want They don't want to say, well, my mother loves me. Maybe, maybe I should listen to her advice a little bit, listen to her suggestions, because she's only interested in my best interest, you know? <laughs> if you say that, well, my mother loves me, then you sort of have to kind of probably listen to her too, and some people don't want to do that. So. Isn't it we chant for impossible to become possible? Yes, absolutely. We, are, we chant, we also chant to turn poison into medicine. These are the things which yes. helps yeah. as a Nietzschean Buddhism. And very do you important. know I've always believed in my heart and in my mind that you can turn anybody into a friend, even a person that you got off with on a very, very bad start. Yes. You can turn that person into a friend. And the person that you started with on an awful footing may turn out to be a better friend than other people. They will. They yeah. will. If you're confident enough, that's what. You know, Daimoku helps a lot. Okay? Doesn't matter. We, have no, we don't consider anyone as an enemy. Because we consider them as a friends. Doesn't matter if it's a, you know if you don't have a good relationship with them in the past or in the future. But we chant for their happiness, yeah. so that we can get into the world. 
we are doing our human revolution to become their friends doesn't if he if he's not if he thinks he's not his friend maybe it's their problem but we think everyone has a friends and we want to develop the relationship <coughs> excuse me you know one day i had a case against a black lawyer mm -hmm. and this was before there were a lot of black lawyers this was 20 years ago. and we got into a, a real problem in a deposition even the witness was kind of taken aback and I went back to my office, and I thought to myself, "This, nah, there's something wrong here. This shouldn't end this way. And mm -hmm. I called the guy up, and I said, I want to take you out to lunch. I know you hate my guts, but I want to take you out to lunch. <laughs> That's nice. And we went out to lunch, and I don't know. He just, and he felt that our problems stem from a racial standpoint, which they really didn't. I just didn't like his legal point of view. It really had nothing to do with race. And uh, we talked it out. And uh, believe it or not, things worked out pretty well between us. So you never know. You never know. You can you can do it if you want to do it. If you but you got to take action. And you got to make the effort. Anita, yes. I want to yeah. thank you for this beautiful middle segment of our show. And yeah. I hope you have a wonderful week. And I hope you love more people this week and make more friends. Sure. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. And now I have the pleasure of having with me in the i-net radio studio, Rosemarie Ferrer. Rosemarie, how are you? Great, Jim. Good. Rosemarie, I have been talking to Narisa and Anita about loving your fellow man. And we've gone through all sorts of Oh, I, I wouldn't want to say problems with that, but all sorts of ideas and thinking about how to do it, what to do, whether it's worth it, who knows. A at any rate, uh, Dr. Schweitzer was probably the most famous doctor in the world back in the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, because he went over to Africa and treated people for a wide variety of diseases, polio, uh, you know, all, I can't think of every disease, but huge diseases, big diseases. He went into the jungle. He was a famous guy. This, And, of course, I mean, here's a guy. He dedicated his whole life, sacrificed his whole life for people on another continent, okay? And yes. he said, so I wouldn't say he's the typical guy. He's a little, probably a little better than I am. And he said, always seek to do some good somewhere. Every man has to seek in his own way to realize his true worth. You must give some time to your fellow man. For remember, you don't live in a world all your own. Your brothers are here too. And of course, I talked with Anita and uh, and Narisa about the fact that, you know, we're all interconnected and we're all on this little planet together. And due to gravity, there's no getting off the planet. You can get off it for a few seconds in an airplane, but believe me, you're coming back to Earth shortly. And we do not live in a world all our own. So do you think that we should... And as Nietzschean Buddhists, we really have a responsibility to always be trying to do some good somewhere. Absolutely. Yeah. We always have to because um, a person who uh, respects others is respected by others in return. So those who treat others with compassion and concern are protected and supported by others. So our environment is essentially a reflection of ourselves. Yeah, yeah. We have to. We have to be compassionate. And if you don't do that, not, you know, you're not really living much of a life. You're living a Absolutely. life all thinking about yourself, by yourself, worried about yourself. And uh, that really is not the way to go. It isn't. And I talked to Anita or maybe Narisa about the fact that we all need other people. There's no such thing as a person who's done everything on their own. Everybody's been helped by other people. And uh, Dr. Schweitzer put his money where his mouth was. 
I mean, he lived in Africa for years and years and years and exposed himself to all sorts of diseases. Thank God the Ebola wasn't around in those days. Exactly. And uh, he uh, was quite a man, but there are very few people in the world that ever did what he did. He went out and spent every minute of his life trying to help other people. And mm -hmm. uh, I think that made him a lot happier. And I think it brought him a lot of love for other people and really happiness and love for himself. So, you know. Now, D.H. Lawrence, the fellow out in the desert, or was that T.E. Lawrence? I can't remember. There is only one thing that a man really wants to do all his life. They always use the word man, but it's interchangeable with woman. Uh, one thing that a woman wants to do all her life, and that is find her way to his God, his morning star, whatever you believe in, you understand. Mm -hmm. We have a universal mystic law, and that's a little bit, we, we could spend hours talking about that, uh, and so, salute her fellow woman, uh, and enjoy this person said, the man who has come the long way with her, hmm. and he says that's the only thing that people really want to do, is to salute their fellow man and enjoy other people, wow. Is is that your ultimate wow. goal, Rosemary, to uh, so you know love your fellow man? Of course, we have to love everyone, not just me. But before that, I should love myself first. Yeah, that's true. Because you, you, we cannot save everyone. Some people are going to destroy themselves, mm. no matter how much you try to help them. So, so also, uh, people has need to learn that their actions do affect so we should be careful what you say and do is not always just about you mm. well we talked about one thing that you just said and it's true that there are some people who are going to destroy themselves no matter what uh and i i guess that's just probably a mental thing or something i don't know what it is. you're right uh but we talked about the fact that we should try to help people realize their highest potential. And their highest potential may not be as high as yours or mine or a million other people, but I guess we ought to get them to the highest level that they can get to, even no matter how screwed up they are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think in order to overcome our prejudices, we must um, constantly strive to develop the habit of looking at ourselves from the point of view of others. Yeah. So, you know, realizing that all people have both good and good points and bad. In the end, the important thing is to strive to combat our own inner obstinacy and narrow mindedness. Yeah, you have to do that. And you have to look at yourself, and we talked about this, and our own faults, and, uh, you know, realize that not no one's perfect, and certainly we are not perfect. So if we're going to create friendships, we have to overlook in our own mind certain things that we don't like about the other person, because they probably exist in us to even a greater degree. And uh, to be fr if you to be friends with anybody, you have to overlook some things about them that you don't like. Exactly. Yeah. There's always going to be something about somebody that you just don't like. And to be a friend, I think, is to overlook those things and to love them in spite of the things that you don't like. So it's not easy. It's a challenge. It's a challenge. Now, a woman named Patty Smith. I don't have the slightest idea who she is. Uh, bringing good news is imparting hope to one's fellow man. And she says the idea of redemption is always good news, even if it means sacrifice or some difficult times. So her goal is to bring hope to other people. And you have to pay attention to other people to do that. You have to talk to other people. And you have to hear what they're saying. And what that means, Rosemary, is you've got to put some energy into your relationship. 
Are you willing to give the re- the effort? Because you know you work. You have your children. I realize your children are adults, but you have your children to think about. You have to make money. You have to shelter yourself. You have. We all have all these problems. Are you willing to spend the time to give hope to another person? Um, a single word can scar another. So a single word can also give comfort and relief or steer one's spirit to courage. Yeah. Um, the care with which we use words reflects the, the death, death, death of our humanity. Yeah. So words spoken from the heart and filled with a powerful wish for someone's happiness can deeply touch that person's life and revive his or her spirit and becoming a lifelong inspiration. So consideration is is training ourselves in the art of encouraging others. The important thing is not just to sympathize with or to pity others, but to really understand what they're going through. Empathy is crucial. Sometimes just having someone who really understands can give us the strength to go on. Yeah, and to be understanding. Ugh, man, does that take an effort? <laughs> I, you know, dealt with a person who was in a very bad family and legal relationship, and uh, I it really took everything I had to understand everything that she was going through. And number two, to be compassionate. Sometimes she just wore me out. She just wore me out. And uh, there even came a couple of times where I just gave up. And I shouldn't have done that. That was a mistake. So it's not easy. It's just not easy. To be compassionate and thoughtful is, is a hard thing to do. But, I, you know, never give up, right, Rosemary? Never give up. Yes. And I think I, I did make a mistake there. I think I did give up. And, and after this show is over, I'm going to try. I'm going to go back to trying to give that person hope or something. It just, it yeah. just wore me out. But, you know, it's, it's true. That's what you have to do. It's funny. I, I, <laughs> that just dawned on me doing this show what I need to do. <laughs> it's weird. Uh, Kafka said, And this, of course, goes to what we do, chanting. The relationship to one's fellow man is the relationship of prayer. And I think that you, well, we have prayers too. And I think that you can also put in the word uh, chanting, chanting to the Gahans and, you know, is the relationship of prayer, the relationship to oneself is the relationship of striving. And he said it is from prayer that one draws the strength for one's striving. Yeah. So he said we have to pray. We say we have to chant in order to strive, strive to do things. In other words, I think that chanting gives us the strength, the inspiration, the desire to uh, help, you know, help other people and have a good relationship with them. And as you said, first, we have to make ourselves happy. Well, he's saying first, we, in addition to that, First, we have to make ourselves strong. And, you know, we have to be strong. We have to be ready to wage the battle. And I think that as, in, as Nietzsche and Buddhists, we get that from chanting. What do you think? I think it's also similar. The, the only way for us to uh, come and polish our character is through our interactions with others. Yeah. So, so uh, genuine sincerity opens people's hearts while manipulation causes them to close. So it's just like the Buddhist scripture states that the voice does the Buddhist work. The voice has the power to convey one's compassion for another. No matter how much you care, the sentiment alone will not communicate itself. When your feelings are conveyed in words, your voice will have the immense power to move another person's heart. You know, at the beginning of the show, we talked about that your words cannot be hollow. You have to follow them up with action. And you just use the word sincerity. You know, it's one thing to say, oh, I'm listening to you. I'm interested in you. I want to help you. But you have to take action. You have to have sincerity. And uh, you just said it. 
you just said it. And uh, Kafka says we need to pray, and I think that we need to be sincere in our chanting and what we're chanting for and what we're thinking when we are chanting. I think we have to have sincerity, and that is huge, 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 huge. I don't think it does any good to just pretend to care for somebody or like somebody or to love somebody, okay? Mm -hmm. A guy named Bryant McGill said, join me as I seek the humility to love and understand my fellow man. It does take some humility. It, it truly does. It, it, it's not easy to understand and love your fellow man. And I think that you need to know that. And you have to be humble as you go about this. Do you with me on that, Rosemary? Yeah, I think um, it is much more valuable to look for the strength in others. Yeah. You gain nothing by criticizing people's imperfections. No, no, don't do that. That, yes, that is, you are absolutely right. That's not going to get you anywhere by telling people what they're doing wrong or what's wrong with them. or uh, It's no good, no good. That's just negativity. You know, when I got out of law, one of my closest friends who has two masters in psychology, he said, Jim, stay away from the no people, the people that say no about everything. He goes, stay away from them. And uh, that's probably true. And, you know, another person said, though, it's more important to treat one's fellow man well than to always be praying and fasting and touching one's head to a prayer mat. In other words, and Mr. Ikeda said this a lot of times, you have to take action. It's not just enough to touch your head to a prayer mat. I guess that's in a particular religion he's talking about. I'm sure, judging from his name, that he's a Muslim person. And I'm sure that's what he's talking about. And it applies to all religions. Uh, you just can't put holy water on a Catholic and, uh, you know, and uh, whatever Jewish people do. You got to go out and you got to take action. You understand? Yes, because world peace are all our personal dreams. Yeah. And to commiserate with or feel pity for someone who falls short of genuine compassion, understanding is the key. People can find the strength to carry on simply knowing that there is someone out there that understands them unconditionally. So actions is essential to make our dreams. As Daisaku Ikeda explains, prayers include the actions we take to realize them. It is just like an arrow drawn back, charged with energy and shot from a bow. Prayer without action is idealism. An action without prayer is futile. So people often come to Buddhism to learn how to value and love their lives enough to start setting determinations. It's like love your life more and let's treasure everyone. Yeah, you have to be determined to do it. You have to. You, you just can't give it a little bit of effort or give up. Jerry Lewis, the comedian, said that when he was around 65 or 66, he started to feel a lot of personal self-esteem because when he looked back at his life, he felt that he had made a big effort. I don't, you know, I hope it was successful to help other people. And that made him feel good about himself. Don't you agree that that will give you a lot of self-worth and a feeling of goodness about yourself if you do good things for other people? Yes, it is only when we have experienced the worst, most crushing of times, when we have plunged the depths of life that we can experience the joys of genuine friendship. Only a man of principle, a woman of resolve, a person who stays true to their chosen path can be a trusted and true friend and have real friends in turn. So it's not really easy to find a really good friend that who, who cares about you inside and outside. Do you know, people oh, who no, come no, to no. you. Oh, no, no, no. It's hard to find these friends. It's hard. Yeah, and people who come to your aid in a time of personal crisis are people of genuine compassion and courage. Yeah, I agree. And it's hard to find them. And there ain't many out there. But 
If we keep doing enough of these shows, maybe we'll create a few more. (laughs) I want to thank you for coming on the show, Rosemary. It was an unusual show in that we did it in three 20-minute segments, but that's the way video conferencing, the Internet, and Skype are. So thank you for coming on the show, and I look forward to hearing from you next week. Bye-bye. Nam-myoho-renge-kyo. Nam-myoho-renge-kyo. Good night, everyone.